what up agents so it's time for the update with 16.2 and as we speak the servers are down but the update is 3.5 gigs so there's that i figured i'd take this time to put in some work and talk about one of the builds used in my last video before going too far and babbling let me get you guys to go ahead and subscribe and if you're too lazy to do that at least hit the like button also as it helps so sledgehammer this talent gives pure damage to armor the base gives 30% and the named versions give 40%. Here you're going to see the base version on a FAMAS up first in Dark Hours. With a future initiative build of the group, my FAMAS on this build shreds heavies with 1.2 to 1.3 million per round. To put it simply, with two pieces of walker giving 5% damage to armor and another 5% weapon damage, plus the damage to armor roll on the weapon itself, I'm getting 41% damage to armor. That would be 49 if I ran the contractors. But here I'm running the Bloody Knuckle Exotic Gloves for the extra 25% weapon damage. So how does this work? Simply by throwing a grenade. Once a grenade damages an enemy, both Sledgehammer and the Bloody Knuckles are activated. The Knuckles will give you a steroid-like boost to 25% weapon damage, sending your lethality through the roof. It goes super hard for 20 seconds or so. I'm talking Tropic Thunder levels of damage. If you want to ensure the buff for the next armor target, you can just swap the gloves and swap back for a fresh can of whoop ass. Okay, so what are the downsides? Number one, hitting an enemy with a grenade. In the open world, unless you stick one of these guys in place with a foam grenade, hitting them can be difficult to say the least. But if you know where they're going to be, they are in deep Dang. Number two, limited grenades. What I do in raids or in some missions is just to switch loadouts to a different specialization and then back, which refills all your grenades. So basically I get flame grenades back along with having six or seven concussion grenades. So that's like a total of 13 or so grenades. What you see here is a million plus per round until the armor is stripped, which is exactly what you saw in the heavies and dark hours at the start. It goes from a million plus to 700k or so. That 400k per round is direct armor damage. So think contractor's gloves times four. The build itself will still have you doing insane damage and leaves a lot more room for experimenting. I'm personally not a tank player for example, however, the possibility to run a tanky build and still be able to dish out 50% damage to armor is appealing. Let me know if you want to see a video like that next, and once again, slap subscribe and show some love and happiness like Al Green. We're going to take a look at the build here in just a moment, but as I've stated before, the build I'm using suits my needs. I say that to say this, our needs may not be the same. I'm already conditioned to run a min-max build, minimum armor and maximum damage. If you jump into a random group, this may turn around to bite you in the ass. For example, I'm in a matchmake session here on the Pentagon, heroic with directives. This is not my session. And in the process of trying to get footage, I end up with one of these guys who feels like standing in a position that blocks 90% of everybody else's shots is the best way to go. Please, if you're this guy, just stop. Because you may get damaged, but the other people in the group just end up having to shoot around you, which we can't. Then we all end up probably getting killed, which is a thing. I show this clip to shine a light on what happens when you matchmake and to say, thank God you can't matchmake for normal raids. Some people want it, but I'm here to say, fuck that shit. Because somebody like me is just here to make a few videos and run raids. But when I do want some unstaged random gameplay, last thing I need is your silly ass monkey wrenching my get down, bro. So anyways, let's look at this particular build. Now some YouTubers may give you a deep dive into every single role on every single piece, but again, fuck that shit. I'm just gonna give you the basics because if you wanted to farm for the exact piece, your car may be capable of flight before you found it. On the bright side, as of making this video, the update has finished and now you can roll sledgehammer onto any weapon you decide that fits your needs. As you can see on this one, we have a Walker Harris glass cannon along with a holster which is gonna give you the 5% weapon damage as well as the 5% damage to armor. I have a GS mask, a Providence with Vigilance on the backpack, the Fox's knee pad, and of course the Bloody Knuckles exotic gloves. Do you need to run these exact pieces? Of course not, unless you want the exact result you see here. But again, these are my needs, not yours. This video is more about the talent and the combo. How you choose to implement them depends on your needs, not mine. Now we're going to introduce the busy little bee to the Dark Hours Raid on the Tarmac for some fun. Here's the build I'm going to run, same build I just showed you, but with the bee. So to recap, we have the following here. We got the Bloody Knuckles Exotics that work with the grenade. We have the FAMAS running Sledgehammer. 
So dealing damage with a grenade will mark an enemy target, right? Now, targets that are marked will take 30% more damage to armor and have 20% less mobility. As you can see on the stage left, the name version, it's 40% with 30 less mobility. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to be using the FAMAS. Thank God they actually fixed the bug where you couldn't slap the sledgehammer talent on the weapon you wanted. Anyways, glass cannon, Walker Harris chest, Walker Harris holster for the 5% damage to armor and the 5% weapon damage, a GS mask for the crit damage, a Providence backpack with vigilance. To round it out, we're gonna run the Fox's Prayer knee pads for the 8% damage to target out of cover. Okay, so here we are in dark hours. Now, once I get up this rope, I'm gonna do my thing with the blinder, and I'm gonna pull out the busy little bee to mark as many targets to become available. Because every target I mark is gonna grant 20% weapon damage, and that's gonna play a big part in what you're about to see here. I'm just basically waiting right here. The guys up at the front are doing their thing. As soon as one of these ads comes up over the uh, the truck here, I'm going to mark him, and then I'm going to mark the big guy who comes up right after. So I'm just waiting here. There's number three, and here's number four. Now I'm going to toss this grenade here. Once this grenade damages Boomer, Sledgehammer procs, and this guy is toast. Look how fast he got killed. There's no, um, there's no future initiative in here, so we don't have that added 25%, but we got the bloody knuckles for 25%, plus we have the four shots from the, from the, uh, the busy little bee, which added 80% weapon damage. And that... 80% or at least the other uh, bloody knuckles proc works for about 20 seconds or so or until you throw another grenade Okay, so here we're gonna look at the exact build that I was using in the footage you just saw bloody knuckles exotic gloves We have the famas with the sledgehammer the busy little bee is on there because that's what we used to proc on the uh, the Couple of ads were standing in front of us at the on the tarmac So here I'm gonna simulate that by shooting a few of these guys Each one of these marks will give you an extra 20% damage, right? Four. There's a fifth just to simulate the uh, crit hit damage. Toss a grenade on that thing, that'll damage that one. Switch to the FAMAS and go to work. The damage numbers just can't really be argued with as far as the burst DPS for this. It's just really incredible the amount of damage this does. Toss the grenade, you got the B proc plus, you got the knuckles and the sledgehammer. Crazy damage. That's basically all it is. So if you want to make a build like this, there's the pieces that you want to use for it. Um, it's pure damage to armor. So of course I'm sure you know there's a few areas in the game where this can come in really handy, especially when you know where the NPCs are going to drop down, like the heavies, where to expect them. So you can just toss a grenade and get to work and light those guys up as fast as possible. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll put a Discord link in the description below. Until the next one, guys, have fun, and I'll see you, uh, see you somewhere in the game. Bye-bye.